Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have ourselves a 1v1 on Samoski. Our heroes today are going to be Insane Dev M playing as the US forces in the blue. And his opponent in the red is going to be Panzer Grenadier 1945, also known as Angrafien, or Angrafien, I don't know what, how to pronounce it, but playing as the Ostir or Wehrmacht faction in, like I mentioned, the red. MG42 coming onto the field for him. Now, while the game starts going, Devim has come out of the uh, the shadows. <laughs> he was going by Insane C++, and you've seen a couple games from him, so if you want to look back and see how he has been progressing. In fact, he's been progressing so well with the U.S. forces that, at least at the time of casting this, he currently holds the number one spot for the U.S. forces. So, I think he's good to go for the uh, for the Operation Charlie Fox, isn't he? <laughs> well, should be a treat here to see how he plays the U.S. forces and got himself to the number one spot. Now, he is getting rifles, you know, right now. And he goes for the Rifle Company, which means that we're going to be seeing Elite Rifleman training coming after that. And Veteran Rifleman hitting the field. Yeah, there you go. Veteran Rifleman now on the field. So he gets another squad with some veterans on it. Actually has Veteran C1. And, uh, yeah, a little bit of chunk there into Veteran C2. So, engagement down in the southern island. Rear Echelons and Pyo is engaging. Rear Echelons trying to go for the house, but the Pyos quickly jump in and deny them that. They put themselves in a little bit of cover, although that cover is directional, so it's not providing them any cover right there. But at the very least, they do deny the ability for the Pyos to capture the point as they are forced to pop inside the house. Once they pop out of the house and try to take the point again, now they're going to rush for the house. Are the Pyos going to be able to deny them that? Well, the rear echelon squad is down to three men, but they managed to pop themselves inside the house. They are getting shot at in both directions by the Pyos and a grand squad for Mr. 1945. <laughs> Sounds kind of weird to say. Panzer Grenadier. Sorry. Ow. Hit myself. Um, and the Pyos did manage to capture the point, which will you know, be nice. Rifles for Devem moving up all the way to the front of the base for Angrafin. He's trying to decap that strategic point, but it looks like he is unable to do so. He's now moving up to get the flank going on that grand squad, the rear echelon squad, popping out of the house, down to two men, going for the strategic point. As we saw, the Pyos going far south for the uh, fuel point, as a veteran rifle squad is moving in this direction. Friends and rifles engaging relatively close range. The rifles were not in cover. Now they're in light cover, but they have taken sustainable damage. MG42 setting up in a shack behind them. They're going to be forced to retreat. The MG42 is turning itself around to try to shoot at the rifles, which means it's not going to be able to set up in time to get a shot off on them. So the rifles are able to get out of there scot-free without taking too much damage. So Angrafin, for his part, went for Tier 1, like you would expect. He did get an MG42, as we saw to begin with, but he now has three Grens on the field to match the three rifles for Devin. Devin probably teching. Yeah, we see here the Lieutenant coming up now. So he's going to be in a disadvantage a little bit right now. He has the Elite Rifleman down... Well, not Elite. Veteran Rifleman, really. Uh, down south, just... Well, essentially patrolling. They managed to push away the Pyo squad, but they can't push up to the north as we have an MG. And two Grand squads defending the zone, so they're just going to be moving around. Going to the far edge, looks like he's going to be trying to go for the hopping of the wall. Up in the far north, we have a rifle squad behind the lines for Devon, going to cut off... Uh, well, not really cut off anything. He's going for the strategic point outside the base, but the fuel on the far left-hand side has not actually been capped by Angrafien, as he is currently sending a Grand squad only there. Rifles engaging against the Grants at range. They are in some heavy cover, although it shows mostly light cover because of the trees and such. However, now they put themselves into some heavy cover, which means they'll win the engagement. Lieutenant is on the field. He's currently moving down the center, but coming behind the Lieutenant very quickly is going to be your utility car. Utility car. Very good. It's essentially, you know, kind of following in the steps of old Vico going for the uh, a fast... Um, not steward... Uh, Greyhound. Uh, kind of have the same impact. Of course, the utility car isn't as strong. It doesn't have that main cannon in it, so it's not that good against other vehicles, but it's still just as good against uh, infantry, so you can see why it would be a uh, popular thing to go for. So down south, we see the veteran riflemen retreating as they weren't able to succeed on the right-hand side. 
Grand Squad trying to go for the fuel. They decide to put themselves in an angle where they aren't able, are not able to do much. Grand's popping up in the north into the house after they decap the fuel. Raffle Squad engaging them, but the rifles are at a disadvantage here, even though they are only shooting against one Gren, you know, because of the one window. They are not in cover, so they're taking full damage there. Down south, a utility car did manage to push away the Grand Squad as it decapped the fuel. And in the center, we see the Lieutenant pushing forward with the support of a rifle on the flank. MG42 popping inside the shack. Lieutenant Squad going to put itself in some heavy cover. The MG42 will open up on the rifles as they approach. They are in heavy cover, although they're mostly in light cover because of the brush nearby. Still, the uh, Lieutenant is going to be drawing the fire here of the MG42 as it is set up in some heavy cover. Rifle Grenade flies. Oh, a nice hit on the Rifle Squad. Down one man. Almost takes it out completely. I'm going to feel nailing it with a nice, very nice Rifle Grenade. Lieutenant still holding the line. The Lieutenant himself actually popping a little bit back from the wall, which actually exposes the squad to get suppressed. Lieutenant goes down, and the rest of the squad is left to wonder what to do about the situation. Second utility car on the field for Devon. That is a very interesting choice. We haven't seen that just yet. But, I mean, it's still, still pretty good. Grand Squad in the center being forced to retreat as the Lieutenant Squad still holds the ground. The MG42 was popped out of the house as it took some damage, but it was actually still okay. More veteran rifle coming onto the field. Make sure that that veteran C keeps on rolling. Rear Echelon Squad retreating from the north as it got engaged, I guess, by this Grand Squad. Makes it out of there barely alive, though. Could have actually been lost there. And the utility cars are patrolling around. Pile Squad's going to be laying down tier 2. Probably going to be getting a... Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, I would assume a pack gun would be the natural choice, but could also go for yeah, could also go for the two two two. I mean, the two 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 is pretty good against the utility car. The utility car doesn't have big guns, like I said. It's not the Greyhound. Doesn't have that uh that main gun. But I mean, you can still pop out the crew, get a bazooka shot off and such. But it's a risky maneuver to do. So far, Dev, I'm going to be popping the crew out, though, just to get some capping going. As we see up in the far north again, the crew popping out. So it's a risky move to do, but, you know, it's relatively okay. He knows he, you know, circled around. He knows that there's not much there. Does only decap the point and then move away. Knows that the utility car is in a kind of vulnerable spot. The one on the right-hand side seems to be in a little bit of a better spot since it has a rifle squad nearby to help out. So he just decaps and he's going to pop back in and then move into the center. Well, not center, but I guess the northern left <laughs> i don't know uh to get on the grants on the victory point grants forced to retreat losing one of their men on the retreat the utility car seems to be getting bold because of that i'm gonna be chasing them down and try and get some extra kills does have a couple of squads in the way so it's actually relatively safe to do that so pretty uh pretty good the 222 is gonna make itself known here on top of the utility car but it risks itself getting shot up here by the rifles and anti-tank rifle grenade it which does not happen, and the Grand Squad barely makes it out of there alive, so a nice move there by Angerfin to interfere and uh, keep his squad alive. 222 pushing up, going to be engaging the uh, Grants on the far right-hand side. The utility car is covering the uh, exit of the base for Angerfin. The MG42 does get its uh, veteran C1 upgraded, which means that it can, you know, pop those incendiary rounds. However, it is going to reposition itself, probably going to be popping inside this shack. Once inside the shack, then I can see it Popping the incendiary rounds. Is it? No. Positioning itself in all directions. There it goes. And the utility car moves out of the way. Utility car in the north did get upgraded. Well, not upgraded, repaired. That's what I'm trying to say. The 222 keeps uh, taking some shots at the rifles at range. The rifles, in cover by the brush there, are able to just withstand the damage. Rear echelon squad retreating once again. Not exactly sure from where. Probably the center, I would assume. As the lieutenant tries to hold the line inside the shack, the lieutenant himself is dead. He's long been dead, but still has the spirit in, of him inside the squad. Up in the far north, the utility car. Nah, damn it. <laughs> the 222. Or uh, the other scout car, I guess. Um, going up to engage the rifles as they're trying to capture that fuel. They'll be able to capture the fuel. I can only assume they're going to retreat as soon as that happens. Nope, they're going to pop inside that house. That's a good decision as that's going to delay against the utility car. God damn it. The 222 all over the place today. <laughs> while they uh, while they engage. Grand's moving up. Those two Grand squads could actually kill off this rifle squad. So the rifle squad pops out of the house and retreats the utility car. God damn it. Why can't I just call it the 222? <laughs> could potentially chase it down and kill it, but it does not look like Angrafin is going to be so inclined to do that. 
Pilot squad moving into the center. Looks like they swept the mine right here. I thought that might have been a Teller mine by Angrafian, but it looks like it was more a mine from Dev M. That's kind of cool. I'm assuming, though, it was a uh, mine from the utility cars. Ah, damn, can't see it there. Where's... Ah, no. Did we lose a utility car? <gasps> we lost a utility car, and I didn't notice. Yeah, because that's the one right here. God damn it. Well, let me go ahead and note that. It's kind of important. So you probably saw it. Before the 10 minute mark, we lost one. Okay, so uh, Devim going to be going for the steward as he also gets a captain. So we now got a captain and the lieutenant on the field. Utility car taking a nasty shot here. Oh, second nasty shot there by the Faust. Grand squad is forced to retreat, but the pack gun did manage to do a decent amount of damage there. And it said we lost an infantry unit. What did he lose? Did he lose a rifle? God damn it. Why can't I pay attention today? <laughs> okay, I'll try and catch all those things. So, up in the uh, victory point by the north, we got a grand squad going for the munitions. It manages to cap it. We do have a rifle squad with a flamethrower. Needs to close the distance to get the flamethrower active. Second grand squad is nearby to be able to help out. Second rifle squad getting right in front of the one with the flamethrower. The one with the flamethrower needs to push forward to be able to get the damage in there. Rifle grenade flies. The one with the flamethrower manages to dodge that. And flamethrower burst now going off right on top of the grand. So rifle squad going to close the distance and force the retreat of both of the squads. Flamethrower burst goes down and one grand is left on one of the squads. Almost losing them completely. Stewart now in the field going to be pushing forward. Getting right on top of the second grand squad. The grand squad is trying, well, already actually captured that point. And the utility car is going to get right on top of it. The one-man grunt squad could actually go down here if it gets target fire by both cars. No, it looks like they're actually focusing right now on the active grunt. The grunts themselves are just sitting there. They're able to throw a Faust if they wanted to, but the pack gun was being moved up. Manages to get a shot off on the steward, and the steward is forced to back off out of the way. Captain up in the north. Looks like it was maybe trying to go for the 222, potentially. 222 is back at base in full strength, so it didn't really accomplish too much. We have a second pack on now coming down for Angrafin. And in the center of the map, we have the MG42 followed up by a mortar. Uh, Bar got dropped into the field there by the lieutenant squad. The lieutenant squad is the one that went down. So considering where the weapon is, I'm assuming it's just out inside the house. You probably saw it when it happened, but at least I know. Utility car popping straight into the center. Going to get some shots on the mortar and the MG. However, the 222 comes up and pushes it away. Utility car able to take a good, decent amount of shots. I mean, it's not as fragile as the uh, the Soviet scout car. Uh, but, you know, it's still outgunned. Oh, Stewart going to be popping out right in front of the 222. But the pack gun was set up right there to intercept it. Gets a 222 stunned, and we see a bit of a flank coming here. Second pack gun moving down the road. The uh, steward could actually get itself killed here. Shot flies from the pack gun. Misses the steward. Maybe it did hit it, but it's not too damaged. And it goes. I'm going to him picking up a bar. So now his grins get a free weapon, which is unfortunate for Devon, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And the Pios are now getting surrounded here by vehicles as we have a utility car and the uh, steward is crushing here. We see Wire getting crushed by Devon's utility car here to open up the approach. And on the right-hand side, the 222 still moving around, still harassing now. Veteran C2 acquired, which gives it more accuracy and more sighting. Pack guns trying to set up across the river. They now notice that the wire has been broken and we have a rifle squad coming up to get on top of them. MG42 set up inside the shack, gonna be able to stop the approaching rifle squad, although a flamethrower burst does go off into the house and a grenade goes into the house, collapsing the house completely. And down goes the MG42, a nice pickup there for Devim. And Angrafian instantly hits that MG button to replace his uh, his lost squad because he knows that he needs that on the field. Devim is really goddamn good at flanking, so he needs at least something to hold one flank. More rifles getting veteranly trained. We see it coming down the field there. And we have five rifles on the field so far for Devon with the support of the captain. Shots flying, or not tracks, uh, Faust flying from the Grenz, hitting that one utility car. The 222 going to be chasing it down. AT guns trying to crawl its way up, crawl their way up to them. 
and uh, catch it. The utility car getting actually stopped there by the steward. Did pop the smoke, but it's going to expose itself to the pack guns. Double pack on shot flies. Hits the steward. The steward down to a sliver of health. Can it actually make it out of there? Feels like no. No, it doesn't. Hang away it goes. The utility car still damaged. It's trying to crawl its way away. Will manage to do that, looks like. Nothing pursuing it so far. The 222 decided to disengage as it took a lot of damage down to a sliver of health, but it's still alive. So, Angerfian managing to uh, make those count. Still haven't actually seen the carcass of the other uh, the other utility car. Kind of surprised. Um, center map, Captain popping forward, getting inside that check. Going to get right behind that... that Mortar squad, the uh, 222 is around, and it's very damaged. The Vesukas could quickly deal with it, but I don't think it has been spotted just yet. He doesn't exactly know where it is. There's also Grand Squads nearby to help out, but the Captain is going to be popping right on top of those pack guns. Going to be revealing that uh, 222, and the 222. Oh, nasty shot there by a Stug. Stug E, of course, for Mr. Angrafin as he goes for the Mechanized Assault Doctrine. The captain trying to push forward, trying to get right on top of that 222. 222 now going to be uh, pushing the captain squad, making it very difficult for them to actually shoot. Of course, the, the retreat and the rifles. Oh, nice grenade on the Grens. Utility car coming up on the flank, but the 222 is going to be able to do fine against that one. Rifles nearby do, do have veteran C2. Could potentially help out against it, but no, the utility car is going to be lost. The crew pops out with the bazooka, getting a good shot there on the main gun of that 222. The 222 is now helpless, and down it goes. The utility car still alive, and the crew... They could have actually just quickly repaired the critical, but it looks like they're going to try and just manually get the fuck out of there with the damaged engine. Going to have to run through a Grand Squad, which means that it's actually going to die. The Grands are probably going to pop out and kill it if the small arms fire don't actually finish the job. Yeah, pop it out, pop it out, pop the crew out. Oh, does manage to pop the crew out. Nice reaction there by Devin. Split second <laughs> manages to get it out. It takes some time, but yeah, it managed to hit and the... Faust does go off and kills a utility car, but he keeps the bazooka alive, which is pretty good. Stuggy is on the field, getting some shots from across the river. Flamethrower burst going off, the Grand Squad taking a lot of damage. Rifle Grenade does go into the house, manages to pop the entire squad outside of the house before it hits, which means that no damage got taken. And the Pyro Squad is retreating from the south as Devon just pushes it away with the second Rifle Squad. Rifle Squad going still th through the south, going to be going on the uh, edge there. And the rifles are going to be capturing that strategic point as the house collapses in front of them to the Stuggy. Major on the field for Devon, setting up a retreat point and an ambulance. Very out in the open on the left-hand side. Grens with a stolen bar and uh, some more Grens just moving around. And the rifles on the far right-hand side don't actually put themselves in a position to cap. So, interestingly enough, Angerfin seems to be wanting to clear off and open up this path, not have any hedges be in the way. Smoke popping in front of those rifles as they try to capture the center victory point. Victory points are 462 to 257. Devon putting quite the bleed. Oh, nasty hit there by the mortar on the uh, on Angerfin. Vehicle crew with its bazooka now outside. What uh, veterans do to get? Repair critical. Uh, repair time and eh, well, they do get a defensive buff in veterans C3, so it's not all about the repairs. That's kind of cool. It's a veterans C3 squad. They do have those SMGs, which are still able to do some damage. And the bazooka nailing one of the men in the uh, mortar squad able to actually do enough damage to kill one of them. Uh, MG42, however, does open up on them, gets them suppressed, and forces a retreat. Far right hand side, the rifle squad does pop a smoke as it uh, captures the uh, munitions on the far right hand side. They do have a flamethrower by themselves. Grenade does go off, but the grand squad was no longer there. Rifle squad forced to retreat, though, as they know they are pretty much surrounded. Center of the map, we do have a big clumping up here of units for Angrafian. His two pack guns are nearby, and we see coming out of the base. Of course, the EC-8. The EC-8 from the rifle company is just so good. So yeah. <laughs> Up in the far north, rear echelon squad still alive. <laughs> Getting a, a decap of that strategic point. As on the far north, we have a rifle squad capturing that point. 
Got a push here from Grenz. One Gren with a uh, bar and the Stuggy still moving around in the center. Teller Mine trying to get laid down here as the point got captured. Rifles and even the vehicle crew moving up to engage the pilot squad. Pilot squad forced to retreat and cancel the production of such uh, things. I don't know what to say. Uh, and, oh, nasty hitter there on the rifle squad. Oh, nice grenade on the MG. Forces it to pack off. The uh, captain squad able to get some nice bazooka shots going on. That's Stuggy. The Stuggy down to less than half health. And a unit is lost as the rear echelon squad seems to have died. I don't know how. Oh. Let's see if I can. No, the rear shot squad is still alive. It's a rifle squad that died. And in the center map, everything retreating down to one and two men. As the uh, MG42 did get cleared out, but it's still there for the taking. And the Stuggy manages to get better in C2, getting those armored skirts. And uh, it's still at about half health. Far right hand side, Grand Squad and Rifles engaging. The Rifles do have a flamethrower, which gives them that, well, much uh, needed firepower against the Veteran C3 squad. Probably would have won regardless, but there you go. And the victory point is taken down south. A Grand Squad with an LMG now equipped, going for the fuel. And up in the far north, the pack gun is moving around as the EZ8 gets right on top of them, the EZ8. Pretty good at clearing it out, but it, uh, it's in a bit of a awkward situation there as it's not in a good angle for itself. Manages to correct it and move down the road as a rifle squad on top of it. Get some shots on the men there, forcing them to just back off. Step away. Oh yeah, I forgot we have the thing over here. <laughs> I was looking for men down south. Rifle squad retreating. I'm going to be retreating towards the captain, which means he has to run the gauntlet through the center of the map. Bit of an awkward angle for it, but I guess it's kind of fine. OMG's taking some shots. And we see the uh, vehicle crew popping into this shack in the center, making itself a target. Not, well, yeah, target, but a threat there to the Stuggy. The Stuggy not in range of that bazooka, so the bazooka is currently shooting at the Grenz. We have a easy 8 trying to get some shots off. In a uh, bit of an awkward angle there. Pack guns are nearby and gonna make it difficult for it to actually do too much. Oh, managed to get a nice shot there. That's <laughs> it nails one of the grins. But it's still, still there. Artillery getting shot at the tank in the form of foliage. Pack guns pushing forward, gonna try and get that EC8, but they are running themselves straight into a rifled squad with a flamethrower, getting one of the pack guns decrewed, and the second one probably gonna be decrewed as well as the flamethrower burst continues to go off. Stuggy doing as best as can, but the flamethrower burst are just too much, and I think... Uh, what was he thinking? Wow, that was a big mistake there by Angerfian. I think he was trying to see if he could catch that EC8 out of position, but he left it unsupported. One pack gun gonna be dope going down here as the EC8... Clears it off. Second pack gun does get recovered though here by a Grand Squad, and we see another one getting produced. The EC8 unable to finish off the weapon needs to get another shot off on it to destroy it. There it goes, but the EC8 now needs to move the hell out of the way as pack gun is now going to shoot it in the face. Probably going to be able to shoot it twice before it moves out of the way. No. Nasty shot flies and it actually destroys the, uh, the remaining parts of the weaponry. And they uh, force the Grenz to retreat. The pack gun backing off. Pyle's trying to repair the uh, Stuggy in the middle of a fight. Grenz and Captain and everything pushing forward. Grand Squad down to one man. Forced to retreat, makes it out, but everything is forced to back off. The EC-8 is still not in the engagement, but doesn't need to, as the Captain's bazookas are just being brutal here on the Stuggy. The Stuggy manages to return some fire, but not doing too much here to the Captain's squad, and the Captain's squad just backs off a little bit. Rifle's going to be trying to go for the decap of the point. Down south, we have another rifle squad engaging the Gren. The Gren's retreating. And the rifles in the center take a nasty shot there to the Stuggy as they uh, retreat. May have been the Mortar as well. No, the Mortar was retreating, so it's probably the Stuggy. MG42 down south getting cleared off. The rifles may be able to take it, and it looks like they will. Got to make sure that the enemy doesn't have it, so now they have to retreat. But that rifle has to run the gauntlet. The Stuggy going to be able to get a shot off on it. Can he actually make it out of there? There's a veteran G3 squad. Oh, it goes in a very weird angle. It actually has to run through the enemy. Well, very close to the enemy, as the, uh, this guy kind of got on the way and he got scared, I guess. But, 
manages to make it out of there. We now have an MG42 on the field. MG42 going to be just set up to cover the right-hand side point as it caps, and victory points are down to 144 for Angrafian. Angrafian calling in an Assault Grenadier squad. It's an interesting choice this late in the game. Captain squad is nearby, also capturing that uh, munitions. I got the rear echelons capturing down south. Front of the base, pack gun moving again forward by itself. Why, I don't actually know. Why, why is Anderson doing that? Seems probably a misclick of some sort. I mean, I don't understand why he would just push with a pack gun by itself. So, one of the ECH pushes forward, gets itself snared there by the uh, Fausts. Does only have engine damage, so it's able to uh, move out of the way. And smoke getting popped there by the other EC8. Blocking line aside out of the front of the base, and the other EC8 manages to crawl its way out of there. Does have a, uh, a squad nearby to help out. Oh, the assault grenade you're trying to push forward. Trying to be very aggressive, but they realize wait, this isn't the beginning of the game. We are not as strong as we hoped we were, and uh, we're just gonna get ourselves killed. EC8 brings it down to one man, and that one man pops inside a shack. Flamethrower burst gonna go off and kill it, and there goes the assault grenade here. Tiger coming onto the field for Angrafien. Pretty much what he needs at this point. Does have to go against two EC8s. The EC8s need to get repaired. One is at full strength, but the other one is pretty banged up. And the Stuggy pushes itself forward, getting right on top of that rifle squad. The uh, second EC8 is nearby. Can get some shots off, but it looks like it's going to cloak itself in the smoke. Rifle grenade flight, or I don't know what the hell that was, but it hit the uh, AT gun, and the ECA moves out of the way as the Tiger breaks straight through the center. I'm not sure if Devim has enough to deal with the Tiger, however, I don't think it's going to be really an issue. I think he's going to win this by victory points. Center point is not currently capped, so the bleed is only two points per tick, but that's still, you know a lot considering that Angerfin is down to 58 points. Rifles pushing forward. They could throw an anti-tank rifle grenade at that Tiger, trying to hit it in the ass and maybe make it fit. They do. They hit. There goes the engine. Rifle squad down to one man. Maybe getting cleared out here as the Tiger is trying to re reposition itself. Bazooka shots flying. The vehicle crew going to be sacrificing itself here as it tries to run the gauntlet. Second EC8 moving up. It has... Is that? Oh yeah, that's the radio net because it has veteran 2-1. Uh, meaning it gets more stats and ooh, looks like the Tiger may actually be going down here. The ECA is putting up quite a fight that the pack guns have been decrewed, so no pack guns are able to provide support. And the Tiger is just not able to do enough damage quickly enough to take out these tanks. One of the tanks does go down, but it even gets abandoned. Not a full kill here as the victory points are down to 34. Tiger goes down. Game comes so close as Hanger Finch just throws it in. He knows that, of course, that's over. Very nice, very nice. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys had a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.